I woke in a cold sweat to a strange room. My head and body ached all over, and I could hardly move. With what strength I had left, I lifted myself up and slowly walked towards the window. A crack of moonlight beamed through the dusty curtains. I parted the dust-ridden fabric and peered out into the world. It was dark outside, except for the soft, ethereal glow emanating from the full moon. My eyes scanned the surrounding area, straining to find any silhouettes cast by the moonlights. Silhouettes of people, dead or alive. I couldn't see anything, but I could hear them. Their sickening, guttural groans and grunts. A chilling reminder of my present circumstances. Pulling away from the window, I searched my current surroundings. In the corner was a dresser. I approached and opened it. My nice stick was inside. A feeling of relief washed over me as I grasped the familiar metal handle. My torso still ached from my injuries, but I felt confident I was strong enough to wield it. It's been a week since I've arrived here in these things are still out there. My thoughts keep going back to the look on their faces as they chase me through the streets, the snarls and hisses, much faster and more savage than the average walking dead. It's probably safe to say that a single bite would be fatal. It's no wonder Raven Creek had been barricaded off from the rest of Knox County. I read some reports from the military camp that civilians were to remain indoors while the infected die off from starvation and thirst. Then another report I read said that the local military gave orders to let no one leave Raven Creek and that anyone that tried would be shot on sight. It wasn't to keep the infected out. It was to keep the infected in. And the military knew about it. A helicopter crash had been reported nearby. Could that have been the helicopter I put my men on during the evacuation? behind me, I could hear them scrambled up the stairs. I opened the window because I knew the door would not hold for very long. I looked down from the window and there were two of them below. This is it, I said to myself. I held up my nice stick, ready to fight. I was going to need food, water, and supplies, so I needed to clear the building and secure the floors. My task was daunting, but I wasn't going to be leaving Raven Creek just by walking out of this building the way I had arrived that morning. After all, I barely made it through the horde. 
I was thinking about how close I came to dying this morning. I had barely escaped over that wall. It reminded me of how important it is to stay quiet. Firing my M16 in this building would be like ringing the dinner bell. I had to be extra careful inside this building, where the stairs are the only escape route. Then a thought dawned on me. A silencer. What if I can make a silencer to put on my M16? Uh, I don't know. It's probably still too loud. Shit. No firearms. I just can't risk it. I managed to find an empty apartment where I was able to set up a small forward base. There was a small office where I could store the evidence I had found at the military camp in the heart of the city. I had spent the past three days stockpiling supplies and was now taking inventory. That's when I heard it. The radio I had found a week ago was receiving a transmission. It was a man's voice, but I could hardly hear what he was saying. Hello, who is this? Can you read? The voice spoke again, but the words were too muddled to understand. I tried moving the radio to different places in the apartment to get a better signal, but it was no use. Then the transmissions just stopped. Nothing but silence. Huh, how odd. That night I headed out towards a crash site located in town. I knew I was taking a big risk in trying to find it, but I had to know. I owed it to me and my men to find who was responsible for leaving us to die back in Rosewood. So, yeah, if you ask me, the answers are worth dying for, worth killing for, worth going to hell for.